Welcome to an introduction to economics, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This podcast provides an introduction to consumption and investment and is the first of two podcasts on consumption and investment. <coughs> we have already defined consumption as being household spending on goods and services which yield utility in the current period. Any part of disposable income that is not spent is regarded as savings. So the relationship we are going to be using is that disposable income, YD, equals consumption, C, plus savings, S. Savings should be distinguished from investment. Investment is the spending of a firm on goods which are not for current consumption, but which will yield the flow of goods or services in the future. One reason why we focus on figures for consumption and the relationship of consumption to income and patterns of consumption is that over two-thirds of all expenditure in the United Kingdom relates to consumption. Thus, even small fluctuations in patterns of consumption can have quite wide implications and repercussions on levels of employment. We shall start with a model based on Keynesian econom economics and known as the absolute income hypothesis. This hypothesis assumes that consumption and savings are directly and linearly related to current disposable income. The map illustrates the linear relationship for consumption and savings. The slopes of each line are important in economics. The slope of the consumption line is called the marginal propensity to consume, MPC. The slope of the savings line is the marginal propensity to save, MPS. If the consumption and saving lines are both straight lines, then the slopes are constant, so the values for the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save will also be constants. The average propensity to consume, APC, will be equal to total consumption divided by total income, C divided by YD. This will vary as disposable income varies. It will be equal to the slope of the ray from the origin to the appropriate point on the consumption line. Thus, at point A, the average propensity to consume, APC, is equal to the slope of OA. The average propensity to save, APS, is equal to total saving divided by disposable income, S divided by YD. We can express relationships here in algebraic form. Here, A equals the point where the consumption line cuts the vertical axis, the intercept term. B equals the coefficient, which is the slope of the consumption line. That is, it is equal to MPC, the marginal propensity to consume. So, C equals A plus B times YD, and S equals YD minus C. Therefore, substitute into C. S equals YD minus A minus B YD. And S must therefore be equal to minus A plus 1 minus B times YD. You should have noted that MPC plus MPS will always equal 1. The hypothesis of absolute income says that consumption and savings are functions of current disposable income, and the relationships are direct. Although the first map showed these to be linear, it is possible for the consumption and savings lines to be curved. In this case, the marginal propensity to consume falls as the marginal propensity to save rises, as shown on this map. The marginal propensity to consume means that for every additional pound of income, consumption rises by some fraction of a pound. Thus, MPC will always be between 0 and 1, but is not likely to be greater than 1 though not impossible. The average propensity to consume, APC, will fall as income rises. It will be greater than the marginal propensity to consume, MPC. Remember, the average propensity to consume was the slope of the ray. As we go from A to B to C, you can see that the slopes of the rays, OA, OB, and OC, are decreasing. What sort of data should we be considering to investigate the income and consumption relationship? 
there are three main types of study that are commonly used. The first of these is the cross-section budget study. This group shall classify its households according to income groups. And it shows their average income and consumption. For these we can determine the APC and MPC. A notable feature is that the average propensity to consume, the APC, falls as we move from low income to high income groups. A second method involves collecting data over a series of years. Over a period of say 10 years, this would be regarded as a short run time study. For this type of study we should be using real personal income and real consumption. In other words, the figures should be related to an index. The third type of study is over a longer period, called a, sh a long run time series study. An interesting outcome of these studies is that they show that the average propensity to consume shows very little variation. The tendency for APC to remain fairly constant conflicts with the absolute income hypothesis, which suggests APC should fall as income rises, or rise if income falls. The map illustrates the consumption line for a long-run study. We can see that the slope remains constant. APC equals MPC. An individual consumer chooses between spending now or later, between present and future consumption. Consider two periods, the present, T, and the future, T plus 1. The present income is YT and the expected future income is YT plus 1. So, present consumption is along the x-axis and future consumption along the y-axis. At point A, consumption in the present period is yt and consumption in the future period is yt plus 1. In other words, all of the present income is consumed in the present period, all of the future income in the future period. Point A represents a consumption possibility. The consumer might choose, if the interest was high, to spend nothing and save all income, unlikely for the possibility. Future income would then become yt plus 1 plus 1 plus i times yt. In other words, the future income plus the present income with interest. This would be point R on the budget line. Alternatively, the individual could borrow. Assume the discounted future income is borrowed. In other words, borrow the future income less the interest to pay off the debt. The individual can now spend yt plus 1 over 1 plus i times yt plus 1. This is point CZ on the graph. The budget line is therefore RAZ. The source of present and future income is wealth, so the position on a budget line may be determined by wealth and the slope by rate of interest. The position chosen will relate to preferences shown by indifference curves. Suppose the individual chooses point W, his current income being YT, then consumption will be represented by OC1 and savings by C1 YT. If wealth increases, then the budget line will change and shift to the right, giving a new preference point of V. A change in the interest rate will call the budget line to, pivot, line to pivot around A. If the interest rate is increased, then the line becomes steeper, as shown by the line INA. This analysis suggests present consumption depends on wealth and interest rates, so it differs from the absolute income hypothesis, which suggests present income alone. This ends our first broadcast on consumption and investment, Brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For further information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.